it's time to pick the type of the house you're going to build. This is very exciting time, by the way. In this video, we are going to learn about the main differences between the types of the houses. By the end of this video, you'll be able to classify most structures you'll see on the street. Let's dig in, guys. First, we need to separate a structure type from the style of the building. This is a very common rookie mistake. For example, somebody may tell you, I want to build the West India, Cape Cod, Mediterranean, or Range house. All of this is a reference to the style of the house, an external appearance, if you will. You can dress up any structure in any style you like. Let's talk about the structure of the house. There are more than 60 types of houses in existence, and it can become confusing very quickly. Let's simplify and look at our original human shelter and all-time favorite house, a cave, a first multifamily dwelling unit. Whoa, whoa, Alex, a cave, really? Just wait, wait, you'll, you'll get it. The main function of the home is protection from external threats, including wild beasts, mother nature, and relatives. Cave was a perfect fit for a while, until we ran out of prime real estates inside. At this point, humans start making their own caves just outside of the mountains. In fact, they were able to cut an entire mountain block by block and stack them in a bunch of mini or mega caves later. At this point of time, a new age of single-family homes has begun. At 10,000 years later, a single-family home is still the most popular type around the world. It sits on its own land and it's completely separate from other houses. It does not have any shared spaces and can be as big as you want it. Usually they are between 1,000 and 12,000 square foot. However, if your house is larger than 12,000 square foot, it will be considered as a mansion, or even mega mansion, if it's above 20,000 square foot. These structures in general required a multiple AC or heating system, but they are, wait for it, a single family homes. Don't forget, most mansions have its own man cave built in. See, we still have a caveman inside of us. Does your caveman have a man cave? I mean, they build a cave within a cave, what's with that? <laughs> For ease of understanding of all other types of the modern structures, think of it as the relations of the main living space to the land and surrounding properties. If you are building in a city and your house shares one or two walls with other homes in a row, it will be considered a town home. And since you own the land and the structure, you will be responsible for maintaining the building, similar to single family homes. If your structure shares walls and possibly a roof, but it has two or more living spaces, this will be called a duplex or triplex in a way, they are modern evolution of caves, a multifamily type. Multifamily is the main term for a detached home with multiple units, apartment buildings, condos, or co-ops. We are not going to dig any deeper into multifamily units in this video, as mostly it's for commercial builders. But you need to be aware of it. Wait a second, you say. What if I have a big family and I wanted a separate space for my older parents, for example? Do I need to build a duplex? No, not really. It can be done in two ways. First is an in-law suit. An in-law suit is a separate unit built into a single family home. Often it's in a basement, but not necessary. It's always a part of the single family structure, as opposed to being a separate structure. The second type of the house is a courtyard house. These houses are becoming extremely popular nowadays, especially after the pandemic, because they offer a lot more privacy for each section of the house. They still classify it as a single family house. In general, they, uh, they have single entrance and the separation is done inside of the courtyard. So each section of the house have a separate entrance, if you will. Let's take a look. So as you can see guys, this is typical modern uh, courtyard house. 
I built this house about two years ago and I'm preparing it to become a vacation rental, so it's gonna be uh, ready soon. But the general idea, this is the main section of the house which has the master bedroom, living room, uh, kitchen and everything, so and it has separate entrance and le leading to the, to the courtyard. This is the other part of the house, which has two bedrooms upstairs and big giant office downstairs where you can work remotely if you like, and nobody gonna bother you. So, and again, it has separate entrances throughout the whole house. Such homes usually have a, uh, they double every system. So they have a double electrical system, a dual air conditioning system, and uh, uh, two water heaters and two, basically two of everything. So if need arise, you can actually rent one part of the house and live in another one. So you get uh, basically a free, free house uh, this way. So, but that's, that's how it's done. The next type is manufactured, mobile, tiny or modular homes. In short, if structure can be relocated at least once or twice and may be put or assembled on somebody else's land. Do not think of it as an old-style mobile homes of 80s. These are extremely popular types of the homes due to the low cost and fast assembly time. Some of them are truly amazing and functional. One more type worth mentioning, it's a very interesting type. What if your home don't stand on land at all? Ta-da! This is called a floating home, houseboat or treehouse. These types of homes are built differently and they are regulated separately in the different states. If you are a creative person and love being on the water or trees, you can build an absolute masterpiece. Now, let's go through some type of the houses which have certain structural features to deserve its own classification range home. It's usually a single-story home but has a large footprint with a larger plot than the typical city plots. This type has plenty of open space outside and typically has a distinctive front porch with rocking chairs, of course. If the house is smaller, has a pitched roof and the same type of the front porch as a range house, it's a bungalow, no matter what the realtor is insisting on. Next type on our list is cottages. The term cottage comes from uh, England and uh, the main feature of the cottages is a high-pitched roof, as you can see here. Uh, most of the cottages do have a vaulted ceiling, which is make it really cool and nice. Uh, this house actually uh, is my uh, vacation rental home, which is on Anna Maria Island. Links below, somebody want to check it out and stay. So you guys welcome. But in, in today's world, cottage mostly refer to vacation rental homes, kind of like upscale vacation rental home, uh, which uh, features airy, tall ceiling uh, buildings with a lot of lights. If a cottage is very small, located in a rural area, less furnished, and in general has only basic necessity, it's a cabin. The next one is chalet. Chalet is a term for property that house sheep and goats in Switzerland. Today, it's a mountain vacation home. Chalet has a steep roof and long overhangs. This roof design is for handling piles of snow. Carriage or coach house. Historically, there are secondary structures on a property built to house horses or carriages. Since then, many have been converted into separate living units that are rented out or reserved for guests. So the new term is a guest house. Today, many new custom homes have additional structure built on the property to generate revenue for the property owner. They are permanent structure and in general not mobile or modular types. Araka, Araka. Now, let's talk about some fancy house names like Chateau, Villa or Manor. Well, technically speaking, it's all the same thing, just came from different languages and countries. A Chateau is a French term used to describe a private palace. It's a luxurious mansion, but doesn't really serve any state purpose. It's a purely private residence that's very grand in appearance. Villa is an Italian and Manor is an English version of the same. There are several more types of the houses, but these are the main categories you need to know in order to get you started on your project. In a future videos, we'll go over your next preparation steps, such as planning, budgeting, costs, regulations, and uh, more fun stuff. For now, 
Go on and drive around your neighborhood and try to classify all the interesting houses you'll see. It can be fun. Thank you for watching, guys, and see you in the next chapter. Lana, Ool. Ool. Lana Lunda Ool. Atuk Lunda Lana. Lana Lunda Atuk. Tanda. <coughs>